So, yeah, let's look at this test, TCS thing once again. So what we were doing when pyramiding, the, the mistake that you guys made was, so what we did, what we wanted to do was, we wanted to find out, of course, uh, with respect to pyramiding, because you're putting on a new position. So we run through the entire uh, gamut of decision problems once again. We went through all of that. Everything is pretty much clear. But the only thing that was not clear was uh, how many units to buy, right? Okay, uh, so that we decided uh, by a certain method, okay? And for that calculation, and we knew that the stock would be here, okay? So uh, what we decided, the problem that uh, was, uh, you guys gave me the wrong level, I didn't check it. Okay, now this, um, so I just want to run through the reason once again. This is your calc file. Most of our calcs we have done here. So maybe I can rename this file as calc IPM. 19 there'll be only one IPM in 19 yeah so calc IPM 19 so the only the calc uh, the mistake I've corrected that mistake if you remember yesterday we got a figure of around 6500 something shares right so that figure was wrong because the, the one of the inputs in the formula that you gave me this one was wrong this was some other figure that you gave me uh, this should have been 2032 which is actually our stop here okay I think yeah, you can still see that 203240. So we've left the 40 out. So this should have been that you guys gave me a different number. Okay. No, no, no. I want to, that's why I want to run through the, I just want to make sure that everybody has understood correctly because some, sometimes you may understand, but you may not, you may think you understand, but you have not understood. Okay. You're going to be tested on all these concepts in the exam. So you better make sure that your concepts are clear and mugging up will not help you. If your concepts are not clear, you will get a case kind of problem. So, uh, or you'll get small problems, which are all basically application oriented. So if your concepts are not clear, then you won't be able to answer any of the questions, okay? So uh, anyway, so what, what happened was, okay, what? let's be clear about what we were trying to do here, okay? So when we went long here for a thousand shares, we later on we said that that thousand was just actually not one lot, but it was conceptually two lots. It was 500 shares for the long-term position, for the long-term system, okay, which had a, uh, and both of them, so 500 shares for the long-term system and 500 shares for the short-term system, okay. And then the long-term system, the stop remained over here, but then the, for the short-term position, uh, for the short-term system trade, we moved the stop all the way up to here, okay, because we, short, we saw this short-term uh, trend developing with highs and lows that were clearly visible, okay. So, the point was that when I was, uh, when we were trying to pyramid over here, the point is you have to ask yourself basically when you're pyramiding that on the original, basically with uh, the idea of pyramiding is that we should mention this here, okay? So we got into all kinds of other discussions also uh, because of the question that Tarun asked, which is good, you know, you should always ask any question that comes up, okay? The point here in pyramiding is that uh, pyramiding should be done increase the total risk for that system um, that is the, uh, the writing is not very elegant but I'll explain to you what it is but I think you'll understand later anyway and this is all being littered in your outline sheet so all this information is there you don't have to write it down word by word, word, by word, uh, word for word okay so uh, without increasing the total risk for that system that is the total risk allowable per trade okay so initially when I put on that trade I was just trying to initially quickly execute a buy so I didn't think about all these things but the way it should have been done actually uh, so you understand what the proper procedure is if at one point of time you're putting in a trade for both for two different systems okay so each system will have a risk capital allocation 
okay so each system let's say you have a million dollars allocated to each system okay so that's your risk capital and the rule I've given you is that you can only risk 1% of a million uh, of your risk capital per trade okay we'll later on we'll figure out where how we how we can have uh, maybe a number different from 1% for the now for, for the moment we are just working with 1% as a shortcut solution okay it has to be a low number so then you take 1% of 1 million and that is how the position sizing should have been de decided that you would have looked at the entry price that 2101 you would have looked at the exit price 2032 okay and then you would have seen the loss per share projected then that number of shares that you would have bought okay we can do that exercise once again okay so if we have um, add one more zero here okay. Right. okay so we have million dollars of risk capital you have uh, one percent of a million dollars okay so you know that you can risk ten thousand dollars per trade now here which so the way we, we should have done it is that if you have ten thousand dollars per trade and your entry price is in this case what 21 let's just use round numbers we'll use 2101 as your entry price and your exit price is uh, say 2032 that's what we were doing when we were looking at this we were trying to enter at 2101 roughly okay and we were using a 2032 exit price okay are you following because so we don't know all this stuff here but the market is here this is the current price and that's when we were entering so the way you should have thought about it is that you have a million dollars each uh, for the long-term system and the short-term system uh, in terms of allocation of risk capital so one percent of a million dollars is your ten thousand dollars okay then um, all right so you can risk ten thousand dollars per trade your your projected your projected entry is 2101 exit is 2032 so projected loss per share is sure the formula is correct is 69 uh, we'll just say we'll assume dollars and rupees are the same just for the sake of this calculation okay so 29 uh, uh, sort of uh, let's say just call it 29 dollars okay so uh, we're losing 29 dollars per share we have added some brokerage consideration also okay and then what we have is the number of shares that we can enter that is arrived at by taking okay you should take the total cost per share is going to be um, <clears throat> round turn brokerage is taken as per share okay suppose you have one dollar per share so what you're going to lose per share is uh, the $69 plus the $1 okay so that's your uh, that's your uh, divisor here and then uh, you have this this is the amount of total amount that you can lose so therefore you figure out the number is everyone clear about this this much algebra everyone is clear Saroni you're clear okay because if I take this numerator and I multiply into the number of shares I will get the total loss right so you have the numerator and then you have uh, so what we are saying is number of shares number of shares maximum number of shares is equal to maximum loss divided by loss per share because if you take this uh, to uh, so if you cross multiply here if you take the number of share loss per share into the number of shares you will get the total loss right so that's why the number of shares is divided. I'm just making sure this is like very baby algebra but I'm just making sure that everybody's clear about that because many of you have a fear of maths and all that. Is everyone clear about this? Now we've already done baby algebra. So everybody should, nobody should have any doubt why this formula is like this. Is everyone clear? Okay. So therefore we have figured out that we can do 142 uh, shares. Okay. The, this seems a little bit, uh, Okay, seventy, ten thousand, something. Uh, okay, we will do. Uh, is there something wrong here? One sec. It seems a little low. Okay, fine. Oh, no problem. I just feel like maybe my my sense of numbers is not correct. 
okay so uh, I, I just want to do uh, I don't know somehow I can't believe it anyway it seems a little low to me anyway never mind uh, okay so 143 shares is everyone clear okay so um, uh, so, uh, so so obviously my my visual sense of maths is not good so uh, so one uh, 143 shares so this is how I should have decided that I will buy 143 shares for each system this is clear this is how I should have decided so that 500 500 that's because I just had to I wanted to just quickly buy some shares in a hurry just to show you the uh, execution of the trade so that should not have been 500 500 that should have been 143 143 actually 142 because you have I rounded it to 143 so you should have rounded down actually okay so is everyone clear now yes. so we should have bought that much now so now when we are pyramiding what we are saying is that in pyramid so what what is the rule that you followed where we are pyramiding for the short term system so uh, we are uh, therefore we are going to focus on the loss maximum loss on the short term system okay so what we are going to say in the case of pyramiding is that whatever maximum loss i was uh, ma maximum loss figure per trade i was operating with in the short term system initially that does not change when you start pyramiding what i mean to say is that this calc when you decided to buy some shares for the short term system and when you decide when you calculated how many shares would that would be okay this 10000 figure that you are that you were using okay for the short term system this will still not change which means that at a point of time you can't have more than 10000 exposed okay for uh, for your short term system okay per trade you can't have more than 10,000 exposed for the short term system so now what you see is that on this at so this is the limit that uh, that you have to follow because this is like a new trade it's like a new trade so it has to follow the rules of the system which means you can't exceed the 10,000 limit okay so in this case what is happening is because our is everyone following so far yeah. okay so even for the pyramiding that's all I'm trying to ensure that because you're just because you're pyramiding doesn't mean that everything goes haywire that you know you start going galloping like a horse so uh, uh, you have to be controlled even when you're pyramiding okay so the maximum risk considerations that apply to a new trade will apply to a pyramiding trade also okay so there could be two kinds of situations there could be a situation that in this situation you see that on the original lot okay the, on the original lot you have you went long at 2101 and if you're stopping over here you're going to make a profit there's no loss involved yeah this is clear okay so therefore you can still therefore you can take the entire 10,000 allocation that is there for a new trade and use that for the pyramiding transaction are you following because on the original lot there is no there's not going to be any loss okay so you can take the entire 10,000 allocation for the new for the pyramiding transaction which means when you're deciding how much uh, how many shares you want to buy when you're pyramiding okay let's say that you were pyramiding at this point let's say we'll just make it a little more realistic let's say that you were trying to buy at 2230 and your stop was at 2207 okay so when you're pyramiding you have to again do this new calculation that you're entering at 2230 and this is your 2207 okay now you can buy 417 shares okay is everyone clear so actually we should for sake of good practice which means we can only buy 416 shares is everyone clear about this now okay so so that's what we're trying to say that the rules that apply to maximum risk per trade in an initial position okay when you're starting out the position and on that same kind of view on that same kind of uh, you're running with the same view here adding two positions okay so initially you had some 143 shares now you were adding to uh, you're going to add another 400 shares and if you're lucky and the trend keeps going higher and higher you will keep on adding positions so eventually you may end up with many lots and a total position which is much higher but at no point of time when you're adding positions can you violate this rule that maximum risk per uh, trade should remain as 10,000 max okay is that clear so now you have that's why so in this case you saw that on the original lot there's no risk okay there's actually a profit so you can keep the entire 10,000 for the new uh, for the new pyramiding position this is clear now it could have been it might have been that I'm just giving a kind of a like a by force example which is looking which is going to look very weird but assuming that you had initially bought uh, something here okay the short-term position you had bought here okay 
the first lot which I'm talking about being bought here let's say it was bought at a much higher level okay let's say that we have these two figures right let's say I just I want to just show you a kind of like a by force example so all right what I'm trying to say is that if the let's assume that the original lot that was bought here that 143 share 146 or whatever it was okay that was bought over here was not bought over here but it was bought somewhere uh, here let's say it had been bought somewhere here are you following okay in that case you're looking at 22 22 okay so if you go back to this if you had an original lot that was bought at 22 22 and it's going to get stopped out at 22207 because what you have done is after the you bought it here then you saw the market drop so much and then it rose but because you saw these high low patterns you raised the stop on the short term position to here 2207 are you following what we are saying that it was bought the original lot now we are assuming we are doing a hypothetical already okay so we're saying that assume that it wasn't bought here what if it had been bought over here at a price of 2222 the original the first lot for the short term system are you following is everyone on board okay in that case what is happening when a 22 22 position gets stops at, at gets stopped at 2207 is that a loss or a profit loss because it's a long position okay so then now you have to basically what you have to see is what is the loss on this uh, 22 22 minus this the per share loss is 15 okay so and the number of shares you bought was i think 143 i think something like that we bought one third 143 or something okay which i was not uh, it didn't seem like a big enough number to me okay so which means how much are you going to do you you bought here you bought 143 odd shares at 22 22 now you after all this uh, drama with came down went up you move the stop here so that 22 22 is now going to get stopped at 2207 which means it's going to lose 15 dollars per share is this clear yes. i'm just mixing dollars and rupees all right okay is everyone so on board so far okay which means how much am i going to lose on my 143 shares i'm going to lose yeah 143 into 15 here we have not added the brokerage but let's just assume that it's not there we can be in real life you would add it okay so i'm going to lose 21 24 21 45 okay all right so now the question is when you are now are you is everyone on board so far so on the first slot even on this current stop trailing stop assume all this stuff has not happened okay we are somewhere here okay so on this first slot we are going to lose two one four five dollars okay but we still want to pyramid because it's going up re-established okay when we are going it's still going up so we want to now after all this drama now the market seems to be moving in our favor so we still want to pyramid okay but we are losing 2145 on the uh, initial lot okay so when i'm adding a second lot what should this number be here risk per trade number that i want to when i'm planning now again i'm back to the original problem of what is the position size on the second lot on the first pyramiding lot what is the position size going to be okay how many shares extra can i buy what in in arriving at that calculation are you following so far you're with me okay what should be the risk per trade number that i use is my question clear in this system in this trading the short term trading system my risk management uh, budgeting my risk planning has come up with an output that i should not have more than ten thousand dollars at risk per trade okay so now in this case i'm trying to pyramid and when i'm trying to calculate how many uh, i already have a position at 22 22 for 143 shares okay uh, now i'm trying to add some more positions as the market is declining to what seems to be and i feel that this will not break okay this is only for the purposes of our discussion okay so um, uh, so therefore i when i'm looking at the market somewhere here okay and i'm trying to uh, add some more uh, you know add add some more shares okay pyramid my long position and i want to i, I want to calculate how many more shares can i afford to buy this is clear this is the decision problem then when i'm trying to solve this decision problem i'm going to use the same framework okay 
but in using that framework what should be my input here for calculating the number of shares that i want to buy that i can afford to buy on the pyramiding uh, leg on the second lot yeah so it should be 10000 minus 2145 is everyone clear okay that's all i'm trying to say again pretty simple so which means that will ensure that on a total basis you will not lose more than 10000 minus 2145 uh, you will not lose more than 10000 this is clear so you maintain your uh, you know that per uh, per essentially like it's even not per trade it's like per stock against a particular stock so the real meaning of a of a of a um for what we really mean is per unique stock okay i'm not going to call it stop loss because in some cases it will um total risk allowable per trade according to the system okay so the risk for that system okay the total risk allowable per trade and actually per unique stock are you able to follow when we say when we give this guideline of 10000 risk per trade actually it is a risk per stock okay really what it is is risk per uh i can just copy it from here stock means the uh stock order okay because the stock essentially defines a view on a particular time frame are you following what i'm saying it's not so much risk per trade because here actually typically against this stock you would have two trades now because you had that initial part which you bought at 14 uh, 143 shares you bought that is one trade or one lot okay now you are adding a second lot okay so technically you could say this is a second trade okay but what we are really saying when we say maximum risk per trade what we really mean is maximum risk per unique stock because the whole trading system is designed is anchored on stops because it's a stock that helps you to control the risk so you can think of everything is in terms of per unique stock because the the stock is also intimately connected to the view can you understand that that everything the stock is intimately connected to the view because what is the view here the view here is the reason we were thinking of pyramiding of course i did tell you that i thought this was going to break yesterday but now for the sake of our example we'll calculate something we'll just assume uh, that this stuff hasn't happened when you are thinking of buying here what are you actually saying if you are thinking of buying more that means you believe the uptrend is still going to continue okay so therefore this becomes the stop is intimately connected to the view because the stop is at a place where if it goes if the market goes beyond that then your view is invalidated because your series of higher lows higher highs the pattern of higher lows is broken so the trend becomes neutralized so your view is proven wrong so you can see how the stop is intimately connected to the view the stop basically derives from the view once you have fixed the pattern size what pattern size when you are because when you are looking at this pattern size when you are looking at this kind of pattern size you are obviously not looking at these big size pattern swings here that are happening that's a different degree of movement are you able to follow this is like these movement if you just look at these big swings like this this is a bigger time frame this is a further zoomed out view whereas this one is a very zoomed in view if you are looking at this degree of swing this is a much more zoomed in view so you have to be clear about the time frame but once you zero in on a time frame and you form a view the view is intimately anchored in the stock the view is totally anchored in the stock because once the stock goes then the view goes right and if the view goes then the position should also go so the position is based on the view so if the view is destroyed the assumption underpinning the view is destroyed then the position should also go that's why you have the stop over there okay so you can see can you see the logic of all this are you able to follow that there is a logic to the system ritesh is not convinced are you able to follow that this can you see that there is some logic to this kind of technical trading even though it seems like very simple but given the fact that you will no matter where you look and whatever time frame you look you will always see this high low high low patterns the only thing you can't be sure about is when this is going to break 
that you will never know and no matter what you do no matter what kind of uh, model you come up with you will never really know if you think you know because of some model then you're a fool okay so you should always be clear that you will never know but that does that's okay you don't have to be you don't have to know in order to make money all you need to do is basically be consistent and use very tight stops okay so that per trade you're not losing a lot of money and then use wide uh, very wide take profit uh, so that reward to risk ratio has to be very high you can see here basically already you can see that on this because we didn't have a big move here on the short term patterns okay we could have had a much bigger move in this case you would have never taken profit you would have just keep kept on moving the stop higher okay and then you could capture a lot more profit so if you capture huge profits when you have a winning trade and you have very small losses okay you don't really need to know whether it's going to work or not you need to have some kind of okay you can have some kind of maybe 50 55 percent accuracy okay we'll see these calculations later on okay how even a lower accuracy rate low hit rate like you're right only about 55 percent of the time and you can still make money if your uh, reward to risk ratio is high okay so we'll look at that so you don't have to know so this is a very uh, very very simple system but it's not simplistic it's actually quite powerful you have to basically use it in a very disciplined way okay so is it so that's all we're saying that in the case of uh, the risk per unit stock so you have to understand this that basically a view is defined anchored in the stock okay so that when you have these risk limits okay these risk limits should apply for each system okay these risk limits should apply per unique stock okay so just like our long-term system also we had ten thousand dollars so we had 143 shares which are still running against the 140 uh with those 143 shares. of course actually we bought uh, 500 shares but it should have been 143 and it would be running against uh this this same stock which you can still see that the system is still running this 203032 uh, stock for the 500 shares are you following okay so this thing is still here the stop has not moved because we haven't made a new high okay this high is not higher than this high this is the highest high so far but this high is not higher so eventually if we don't go below this and even uh, move around here somewhere eventually if we do go higher the moment we make a higher high than this one this is the highest high so far the moment we make a new high okay moment we post a new high then we will be able to move because if you look at the degree of this movement degree of movement on this chart we can even see it in the 30 minute charts the moment it makes a new high we will be able to move the stock from here to here which is a little bit higher not a lot but logically it should be moved are you following the logic can everyone uh, is everyone following what i'm saying the moment it makes a new high here because in this big picture pattern i'm following these kind of big moves okay like this one da up down up down these big moves i'm not interested in these small squiggly things for the big picture system okay so i'm just watching this high is it making a new high or not okay so the moment it clears this high i'll be able to move my stop from here to here okay not much of movement but you have to be consistent so you have to be very careful about whether what because emotionally you may not feel like doing all this emotionally you may already feel like moving your stop here okay because it has gone up so much but technically you can't because it hasn't made a new high all right so therefore because theoretically it is still possible if you look at this there's a fair bit of difference between these two theoretically it is still possible that you can have this stays below this high then comes down goes below this goes below this but does not go below this it's possible anything is possible okay so therefore you should not move it here because then if it does see suppose you uh you know you know moment of weakness you want to do i don't want to, after going up so much i don't want to lose so much money you know let me just move it here it's tempting okay so you move it here now what happens the market comes down and stops this one out okay goes below this but doesn't go below this so your original thesis and, and then eventually breaks below this but doesn't go below this and eventually turns around and goes above this so your original thesis is still valid your original assumption was what when you were buying it here your original assumption was basically that the market will go above this the highest high that you have seen so far the uptrend will continue okay so which means a new high would have to be made okay the market would have to go below above the highest high so far 
the, so your initial assumption when you were buying here for the long term system was that this will go uh, the market will go eventually go above this but it will not go below this are you following yes and you, you don't seem con you're convinced okay so now what has happened your assumption is actually still valid because it doesn't go below this eventually it takes a long time doesn't go below this and eventually goes above that so your assumption was valid okay so you were right but you've given up your position because you moved your stop over here are you following okay so that's why so just like uh, the flip side of what we said earlier the flip the, the reason we said the stop is here is that uh, if your uh, if the assumption on which your view is based is invalidated then the position based on that view should also be removed cancelled out are you following you have an assumption I mean you have an assumption underlying your view and based on that view you take a position okay so but if the market action proves that your assumption was wrong okay assumption underlying the view was wrong that means the view was wrong so therefore the position based on that view should be removed okay that's why we put the stop there so the flip side of that is that but then the, the position based on the view should only be removed when the view is proved wrong not otherwise are you following what I'm saying by moving the stop from here to here too early you would have created a situation where you would have given up your position your position would have been removed but your view was never invalidated are you following what I'm saying okay so that's why it's very important to be very rigid about this Rajan are you following the logic okay so you have to be disciplined on both sides so there should not be any which is why you'll find that when you read books on trading okay uh, there's actually there's a good book I should mention I'll give you a list of books where you very important to read uh, classic books okay uh, then uh, I'll give you a whole list of books actually like uh, so I'll just give you two books right now one is right in the middle of it's it's basically this is off topic okay um, so let me just uh, because it's very you know I see instead of wasting your time on doing all kinds of courses even outside the system okay because I don't know what the quality of those courses is it's very important you can still do that provided your first priority should be your coursework then you should read classic books okay that is much more important than doing uh, you know all kinds of certificates here and there because most of these certificates the quality is not very good so it's better if you read a classic book you can even talk about it in your interview that I've read the intelligent investor I've read this book so you can talk and there's a lot of learning you can derive from reading classic book that that education is much more important okay so uh, you know be be careful in your priorities okay so the, the couple of books I would say you can just Google for this on the internet you will get it okay you'll find a PDF available on the internet okay uh, Ben Graham okay so this is actually Warren Buffett's uh, uh, favorite uh, book okay then so this is one book I'll tell you I'll give you a proper list later on and the other book that you should read what was the book okay this is the book I was talking about trading psychology okay so what's that book okay so the author is Mark Douglas okay so they're all being written in your notebook so you have access to all this okay so Mark Douglas and um, okay so the name of the book is um, the disciplined trader okay so later on that's why you see that um, yeah so the very important book uh, you can see here so I think even this both of them you'll get them on the internet okay so this is a very book important book for um, what I called uh, FA FA is fundamental analysis okay so as a fundamental analyst is the first book you should read okay and of course you've already done a lot of your ratio analysis your, your ratio analysis should be very you should be very fluent okay you should be able to do it with your you know one hand behind your back you should be so, so fluent in ratio, uh, ratio analysis okay and uh, and then you keep following the business news and you can see analysts talking about different ratios for companies what's happening to their uh, you know ca operating cash flow and things like that like just this morning I was listening to a report on Netflix you have that Bloomberg technology report uh, thing uh, program which comes out you should listen to it actually Bloomberg technology uh, it's a 45 minute program every uh, every day five days a week okay? so the posting is a little bit delayed by one or two days but you can still listen to it so they're just talking about uh, Netflix and there's a new rival called Roku who 
which is a big uh, uh, you know streaming is really doing very well the share price is outperforming Netflix so they were talking about Netflix even today Netflix is not uh, you know operating cash flow positive okay so this is one of the things that people look at so therefore you should be very com comfortable how to you know arrive at operating cash flow and things like that these things should be second nature to you so this is all in the realm of FA and this is a very important book to read for uh, FA okay and this one of course is on trading psychology okay which is a very important topic which is never addressed uh, no MBA course I, that I know of they address this aspect but this is very important after, after all we are talking about the investment business okay and trading means here yeah, I'm just using a short word it covers everything it covers all your investing value investing okay whatever else you want to talk about it even covers uh, corporate treasury risk management everything is covered so pretty much I like almost 70 to 80 percent of all the stuff that you do in uh, in a, a core finance role is covered by this concept of trading essentially what it means is I would say even higher than that I say almost 90 95 percent because even in a corporate finance role you have to take a view on markets so if you're like uh, if you have permission for an IPO okay uh, now you see a lot of because the US stock markets doing very well okay so now there's this new company called uh, you must have seen the offices of WeWork WeWork is a, is actually a real estate company it's a commercial real estate company but they focus on all these uh, new startups technology startups you give them workspaces so WeWork is uh, generating a lot of revenue and now they've filed for an IPO okay so you can see how because the US stock market is doing so well companies are coming out of the woodwork and trying to sell their shares you had the IPO of Uber, okay, and you had the IPO of Lyft. Lyft is a local U.S. competitor to Uber, okay. So uh, it's it's spelled L-Y-F-T. So these companies are all coming out. So these are all basically decisions that a CFO has to make. So do I sell my shares now? Like if I'm looking at the U.S. stock market, okay, do I sell my shares now? Okay, uh, we are really uh, drifting from our topic, but uh, I hope you guys don't feel lost. Are you feeling lost? No, sir. Okay, good. Because in, in uh, with me, there's a high risk of feeling lost because I have a tendency to move from one topic to the other. So I just want to make sure. Okay, so you can see how uh, well the US stock market is doing. Okay, so this is actually drawing. Uh, Uber is not profitable. A Lyft is not profitable. They have huge losses. Okay, huge losses, like billions of dollars in losses. They're not making money, but they're coming and selling shares. Yes, Parul is very disturbed by that. You're asking for what? Oh, I haven't taken attendance. Okay, good, good, very good. So, uh, I've taken it. See, I forgot. Okay. okay, so you can see how the US stock market is doing. It's doing very well. Okay, so you can see how these companies, which are not profitable, Lyft is not profitable. They had like a one and a half billion dollar loss or something. Then uh, Uber had a one and a half billion. These guys had uh, 900 million loss. Okay, so even loss making, we work is also a money losing company. Okay. WeWork is, has a lot of revenues but a money losing company and they're all coming to market and trying to sell shares. So even when you're selling shares, try to understand why understanding financial markets is so important because in pretty much every finance role, even if you're a CFO, you're concerned with raising capital. Okay. Once you get the approval from the authorities to sell your shares, you still have a decision to take when am I going to sell it? Uh, because you have a little bit of time in India, you can actually sit on it for even one year. Okay. So, um, then in one year a lot of movement can happen in the stock market so if you sell it immediately okay then and then the market goes up if you take the example of snap okay so this is november uh, this is when the u.s election happened so snap got their approval uh, for ipo before the u.s election okay and you remember there was a lot of uncertainty because people of course they had, they got both the things wrong everybody said that hillary would win and then they said if Trump won, most of the economists, the Nobel Prize winning economists said if Trump won, there would be a global recession and the US stock market would crash. Okay. And after Trump won, you know, you can see how the stock market has gone up. Okay. So they were wrong on both counts. But the point is that so with so much uncertainty, etc., the SNAP CFO, just think about a situation. If he's got his approval, the election is on 8th, 9th November. If he's got the approval, okay, let's say in late October, now he's got a chance, he can sell it right now. Now, he can sell the shares right now when the market is over here now if he does not sell it right now and he waits till after the election and the market actually crashes for whatever reason then people are gonna say you're an idiot you should have sold it earlier right 
but if he sells it right now if he sells it before the election and then as you can see the market shot up then says you are an idiot you should have waited so whatever you do there's a risk right so you can understand even so this trading business that we are talking about how to call how to manage your risk in in financial markets as markets move around this is a very important skill. essentially it, it's uh, focused on how to navigate financial markets and every time you and even this guy has risk on the books you can see because he has approval to sell some shares so if the market goes up a lot more he'll get uh, much more bang for his buck if he waits and the market actually goes up he'll get much more he'll be able to sell his shares at a much higher price okay so that's going to be profit for him so everywhere there's risk involved and profit involved okay uh, uh, so and then you have to essentially you see that eventually the heart of it is you have to take a view on markets can you see that even a snap CFO has to take a view on the market can you see that essentially okay when you're looking at the timing of uh, you, you know you can of course not take a view and just immediately sell it as soon as you get the approval that's but most people actually don't do that okay so therefore that's why this entire course curriculum is designed in this way and one of the things hopefully that you guys are learning through your project in in this particular course and you learn in your other courses as well are you getting the feeling that you're just you're getting uh, a feel of what it means to take a view on markets yes. are you getting that okay so this is why i say this is a very important part of your learning because this is the heart of it actually essentially you'll have to figure out your own way to navigate through markets and how to manage your risk okay luckily when it comes to risk management at least you can have much more uh, watertight rules you can have uh, systems that actually you can always follow okay so that that's what actually will protect you okay so we go back to TCS let me go back to this all right. So the uh, so this uh, so the reason I came to this the reason I started getting off track was because I was talking about the importance of psychology. So what I was saying is that you you when you move your order this is this is called the trailing stop. Okay. So if eventually it goes above this and then we move the original stop on the long term system for the long term system we move the original stop to here. Okay. This would be called a trailing stop. Is this clear? This would still make you lose money, but you would because your entry price is here, but you will lose a little less money than you would lost earlier. Is this clear? So you can't, uh, I think what uh, extrapolating from what the kind of questions Tanya has asked earlier. So she could ask this question that I think somebody actually did ask me this question earlier. I don't know whether it was her that why don't I move my stop to, I, I think it was you. Why don't I move my stop to my entry price so that then I don't lose anything. Okay. Are you able to follow the thinking? It's not, she's not crazy for doing it, for thinking in that manner. It's a natural consideration. So what she's saying is that uh, maybe whatever, maybe what she'll say now, okay, is that initially I took some risk on this. Okay, I was risking $10,000 on this. But now that I bought it here and it's moved all the way up, okay, fine, even if I feel it's going up, why don't I move my stock to my cost price? Are you able to follow what she's thinking? that I bought it at 2101 so let me just move the stop to 2101 so that later if I lose money if my stop is eventually triggered then I have a you know no NPNL basically no profit no loss situation are you able to follow her thinking right like I have a break-even stop like a lot of the time you'll see in the market people say I have a break-even stop are you are you able to first are you able to follow what her thinking is I'm not saying it's correct but I'm just trying to show you what is a natural way to think for people right so is everyone following so far okay so so what I'm saying so what I would say to that is yeah, yes Paul, what is your question you have what commission. yeah commission we would include the commission also in the break even so she was the commission is one rupee per share then she would place it instead of 2101 she would place it at 2102 assuming you have no slippage so that would be factored in if you are actually following that strategy okay so a lot of times in the market you'll find people talking about i have a break even stop okay but most of the time that break even stop is likely to be nonsensical okay because remember the market does not care about your break even okay so your stops have to be meaningful from the point of view of market action okay so can you see that okay when you, when this breaks when this thing broke 
can you see that the break of this low is a meaningful uh, event from the point of view of the uh, what the market is saying about the trend can you see it's a meaningful event because the pattern by breaking this point the market destroyed the pattern of higher highs and higher lows the pattern of higher lows was destroyed yes yoga is not convinced what is your con confusion are you able to follow what i'm saying i'm trying to distinguish between her suggestion of putting a break even stop versus what we have been following so far which is our stops are always at highs and lows the the uh, importance of putting stops at highs and lows is that when that stop goes you get some meaningful information from the market that it tells you that a particular trend is destroyed are you able to follow that a trend is being neutralized but if the market goes through this it doesn't really tell us anything as such if this 2101 whatever this level is okay at this level it has no particular significance from the way uh, from the point of view of the way we are looking at the market as trends and highs and lows higher highs higher lows are you able to follow what i'm saying yes. here what i'm saying is that the break even stop the desire to have a break even stop is a natural human desire okay but understand that it is most of the time wrong unless you happen to be you have gone long exactly at the low in this case your break even is also equal to the low but the point is it's not that's just a coincidence what really matters is the fact that it's a low not that it's your break even are you clear what i'm about what i'm saying is everyone following yes, yes? okay okay so that's what i'm trying to say so again this brings us back to the point of psychology trading psychology that's why i mentioned this book it's a very important book okay and that's why i gave you all the other roles where what when we call it trading actually it's nothing but navigating the market when you have uh, risk uh, you have a potential for loss and a potential for profit in every situation it's the same thing a cfo of snap taking a decision to do it right now the uh, the ipo right now versus waiting for the election it's the same thing he's take he's navigating he's he's navigating the market he's taking a view on the market and he's got high stakes involved because there's a potential for profit and loss in every situation is like that okay so it's it's not uh, the trading is is to be seen not in a narrow sense but in a in a in a very broad sense because that's what pretty much what you'll have to do in every finance role you can think of okay so this is a very important book from the point of view of trading psychology and this subject is and trading psychology is very important because it helps to keep you disciplined when as a human being we are very emotional so always we always want to take big decisions based on emotions okay uh, and sometimes we don't realize it so those kind of decisions are not likely to be correct and in trade if you want to trade like a professional trader as you can see many of the rules that i've given you for professional trading these are not things which come to us naturally right like if i say uh, do you want to eat chocolate everyone knows everybody wants to eat chocolate right so it's you don't have to say uh, you know say to people be disciplined and eat chocolate you know that's what people want to do anyway right so uh, the point is that discipline is important because most of the if the correct rules of trading require discipline because they don't come naturally to human beings okay you would have noticed in your own trading that when you have a losing position you don't want to cut it right and you are quickly taking profits on whatever you have a profit you are taking the profit but you have noticed this have you noticed yes. right yes chuk you have noticed this also okay so you uh, when you uh, when you have a profit you want to quickly capture it but when you have a losing position you are not you are reluctant to cut it off and realize the loss is that clear okay so this is a natural human but this goes against the very principles of trading it's just the opposites of good pr trading principles the good trading principles are you should cut your losses and you should uh, ride your winners okay so therefore that's why i'm saying that discipline is very important and understanding your psychology is also very important okay and not just in a pure trading environment in a broad view of uh, navigating the market and taking views on the market when there is a potential for profit and loss in every, on on both sides uh, on either side so so that's why i said this so that you can read these books so get into the habit of and i'll quickly give you the list of other books okay and get into the habit of reading classic books this is very important okay uh, reading classic books should come immediately after your uh, curriculum and the other market following uh, you know following the market all those instructions that i've given you okay so um, so this will be we had a little bit of a off topic discussion here okay so this is these two books 
okay so we go back to pyramiding what we, what we already said so <clears throat> the point to understand when you think about <coughs> When you think about systems, short term systems, long term systems, okay, multiple degrees of systems, multiple levels of systems, it's all anchored in the stock. Okay, so that's why we say that your maximum risk per trade essentially is talking about the maximum risk that should be uh, attached to a particular stock, to a unique stock. So every system is defined by the stock. Right now, our short term system was defined by this stock. Okay, once this has broken, now it is really defined by this stock. Okay, but it will wait to see whether there is another low formed over here when the market starts rising again, then you can pick another higher stock. But right now you can see that this stock is gone and the really the short term system would be defined and it's really not there if you are going to maintain the bias of the longer term system, which is the long bias. Okay, then you really don't have a good stock for the short term system right now. So the short term system is what we say out of the market right now. It has been stopped out and it's out of the market. Okay, and the long term system is still continuing with this stock. So is this clear? So I just want to get you guys into this part of your training and technical training, which is very important actually. Uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a complete system. Technical trading is a complete system uh, and it will it will ensure that you always survive because it's intimately tied to risk management so if you think of the systems and you already have the idea of multiple time frames big picture short uh, small picture and all that and every whenever you think of a system you think in terms of stops and stops are being given always by highs and lows and that will connect you to the idea of the trend so you look for a trend you take a view on the trend and then you have uh, the highs and lows which make it very clear well you know basically uh, give you uh, clear cut stops so it's a very objective system you don't have to worry too much about how to figure out what where to like i'll give you another example let's say um, so therefore it's very important to be able to stick uh, to um, the to the trading plan okay so let's look at this um, facebook on a daily Okay, so gaps are because this is the earnings gap actually. So this is when you trade stocks. Uh, there's also if you wanted to be really conservative, okay, uh, is that when when you come into earnings, you should square your position or you should buy some kind of option protection because you can have massive moves in shares uh, after earnings. Okay, you can actually have massive moves even after down downgrades of this and that. So earnings here, actually, what happened on this particular earnings uh, call, uh, earnings event is that it's not that their profit numbers were down; it's just that they uh, they revised their outlook down. Okay, the the forward guidance which people give and companies give, they just revise their forward guidance down a little bit, and then you had this massive drop. So there's no way to tell. This is why it's so difficult to design predictive models in uh, in finance and economics. That basically you don't know what how the system will react. Okay, so you essentially you can have a model with multiple variables. You don't know what what variable the market will consider important today. You might have noticed some of this in your own observation of the market that what the market chooses to focus on keeps seems to keep shifting they're not consistent okay so you have a major company like facebook which actually is making a lot of money okay they're making they're actually minting money in, in through ads but just because they gave a little bit of weak guidance then the does, does does it make sense to you that the price should drop like this if you can see how it dropped right so it was like somewhere here whatever it was maybe one one it was uh, two, 217 or something okay and then it drops to 179 okay something like that yeah it's a correction you would call it a correction but the point is look at the size of the move and this is not some uh, you know mom and pop company this is like a huge company which is you know literally minting money from ads okay it's a cash machine and so this company just because they give some weak guidance even though the numbers are okay the profit actual reported profit numbers are okay the market drops like this so it doesn't seem to make much sense that there should be such a dramatic drop for a company like this okay so but this is how the market is okay so even for a mainline stock like uh, facebook 
and this happens a lot in the, uh, in equity markets okay so that's why one of the rules of if you wanted to have a really conservative equity trading program you would uh, as we come up to an earnings date you would square the position or you would buy some options protection okay so in this case if you were long you would buy some out of the money put protection so that if the market drops and then you buy short dated puts okay and then as soon as the earnings event is over then you would again uh, square that position or the put would itself would expire okay so this is what so what i'm saying is that uh, uh, so it's very simple you can see the system is very simple at this point if you if somebody here were going short so you can select highs and lows in technical trading as, as stops if you see somebody at this point let's say and not here but somebody at this point if they were going short facebook where would the stop be if we're going somebody was going short facebook if you see that there's this long uptrend this is the ipo period from the ipo late earlier earlier there was a con concern about facebook will not be able to monetize mobile advertising okay but as you know from being frequent users they are doing a pretty good job of it so then it started rising so you can you see that there's a very long uptrend there are some small breaks in the trend here okay this is like a different uh, degree of trend starts okay but you can see there's a big break here on this okay so somebody might take a view at this point of time that the big uptrend in facebook is over now this thing is going down it's going to go down to hundred dollars or something so if you go short here where would your stock be here right Everyone is convinced? I'm going short. If I'm going short here, I said my view is that the Facebook big uptrend is over. Okay, and this is going down to $100. Okay, and let's say I'm lucky enough to get this price level and I want to go short here. Then my stop, as Tanya is pointing out, should be here. Is everyone able to see the logic of that? No, 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 no. I am going short here, let's say. Let's say the market is at this point and I'm going short here. When I'm going short here, I have to put a stop somewhere. If you're going short, you will sell at the market for a because you're going short. No, no, no. I'm going short means I will sell at the market. But after selling, I have to put a stop, right, to protect my losses. After selling, why did you protect your losses? You are out of position. What? No, I'm going short. I don't have a position. I'm short selling. I'm engaging in short selling. Okay, so this is another thing that uh, you guys should read up on the I go the interactive brokers website. There is a good. I'm sure just search for a short selling tutorial. There is a nice tutorial with pictures and everything of how short selling works. You borrow shares. So I'm talking about uh, short selling. Okay, so you're still in that mode where you have to buy and no but as finance students now and especially since we are studying we are studying finance from a global perspective uh, across asset classes okay we are not studying just stock market right sometimes people because i want to start i want to know what stock market it's not like that everywhere in india people talk like that stock market okay but it's not like that you have to think about glo global markets okay across all asset classes across all instruments that's how you learn from so to the extent that there's commonality across all these elements you should learn it as as general principles are you able to follow what i'm saying okay so therefore you have to get into that more that in finance whatever you want to sell you borrow and sell whatever you buy you buy and put it on investment okay if you are buying currency you just put it as a deposit if you are buying gold you try to lease out the gold there is a market for leasing gold actually okay so you get some kind of return okay so is this clear to everybody whatever you buy you put on deposit whatever you want to sell you borrow and sell that focuses you squarely on the carry of the trade of the net return on the trade if you are borrowing something at 13 percent and you're getting a return whatever you bought well if you're borrowing at 13 percent and buying some asset and that asset is only giving you 11 percent then you're losing every day right because your uh, carry is negative this we say your carry is negative okay but then you can still make money if the asset shoots up like a rocket like the shares of roku i was just looking at the chart today the shares of roku are shooting up like a rocket okay so uh, if the share, if the asset are you able to follow this logic that even if your cost of funds is a 13 percent and the return on the asset is 11 percent okay that is the interest return on the asset is 11 percent so you are losing money on the interest part okay on the interest carry but if the asset price that asset that you bought if that price shoots up like a rocket you can still make money 
Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. So that's the whole game basically. So you borrow whatever, so you get into this more habit of thinking in terms of global markets, across asset classes, across instruments. Always think on both sides. You're free to go short or long in general in liquid markets. Okay. In in certain markets, like as you can see in India, you would face uh, block, uh, you know, institutional uh, restraints uh, because the market is not developed. But the point is here. So what I wanted to emphasize here is that the, in technical trading, it's very simple and it's quite objective. As you can see, if I'm going short here, so this is clear now. I don't have a position. I'm short selling here. Okay. But then where would I put my stop? It would be here, right? Because why? Because if I'm going short and my view is, what is my view? That the big uptrend in Facebook since its IPO, huge uptrend really. Okay. So this whole story is over. Now Facebook has a lot of problems. Okay. So this stock is going down a hundred and I'm going to sell it here. But then I should put a stop at 225 because the moment it goes above this, whatever this high is. Okay. That means it's proved my view is wrong because I said the big uptrend is over. If it goes and makes a new high, then the whole big drop trend has started again. So if my view is correct, then it can't go and make a new high. So I just picked the latest high that I've seen, the highest high that I've seen. And I put my stop there so that when I go short here, this is my stop. So I'll lose this much money. Otherwise, it may, if my view is correct, actually, it may go to 100. Is this clear? Okay. So that's, that's what we are saying that technical trading is very simple. Okay. So we were talking about pyramiding. Uh, and and the very important thing I think uh, to understand is that so when I'm looking at this big picture I was talking about systems and stops you know you have a big picture system a small picture system so you think of every system in terms of a stop and the stop is connected to the view and the view is basically just that you either take a view that the trend is going to continue or that the trend is going to go uh, is over and it's going to turn around okay so in a way what I'm saying here that this big trend okay is of course i already have some confirmation because this major uh, low from which the latest high was made this low was cracked so i do have some some already some evidence in the market that there is a problem with this uptrend okay because this long uptrend has actually been neutralized and it has not re-established itself by making a new high so i do have a uh, fairly strong case for going short okay the really adventurous part would be that if this part had not happened as the market is soaring like this right at the high then you try to go short that is really adventurous because you're really going against the trend but you can always do that but provided you have a way to control your losses that you have a, a objective and uh, you know a systematic method of putting stops so that you don't lose too much money on a trade you can still do that okay so the point i'm trying to emphasize here is that technical trading is is quite objective and it's quite simple and all you have to do basically is look at the chart and take a view only two things are possible either the trend is continuing higher or it has ended and it's now going to turn around this is clear and turn around because we know that there is cyclicality in markets right we know that you understand what cyclicality is the property of moving in cycles hopefully uh, we'll have um, some chart here Okay, so that's all we are saying. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is kind of doing a wrap up on technical analysis. Okay, our technical trading strategy. Uh, you see how simple it is. All you have to do is basically take a view on the trend. Okay, either the trend is and it's quite simple. It's not that uh, like too many possibilities exist. Either the trend is going to continue higher or it's going to go down. Okay, or it's going to turn around. Okay, so and go down in this case. So that's that's basically all there is to it. And cyclicality, I wanted to show you. So this is what I mean by cyclicality. Yeah, can you see that? So U.S. Uh, Treasury. This is the yield on the. Can you see the percentage there? Can you see the percentages? Rajan, can you see at the back? Yes, sir. This is 17 and a half. So this is actually, so this is the US, so this is a 10 year 
uh, interest rate just like in India we monitor the 10 year government bond okay uh, so this is the 10 year this in the US it's called a note at the 10 year maturity from two years five years to 10 years it's called a note it's called a treasury note at 30 years it's called a 20 year 30 year those are called treasury bonds but those are all part of what we call the bond market okay later on when we study capital markets you'll see so this cyclicality can you see what I mean by cyclicality that is moving in a cyclical fashion not very neat but at least if you look at up to here or so it is kind of almost symmetrical and balanced and actually this goes back even further there's only 62 but if you go back to 45 or so you'll still see this beautiful cyclical movement goes all the way up and then comes down almost equal time frames okay like now it's a little bit overbalanced because it's been going down for much longer okay so but this actually this database can go back to uh, some other database can go back to about 45 or so okay so are you able to see what i mean by cyclicality and so everywhere you look can you see what i told you that wherever you look this is the interest rate that the u.s treasury has had to pay over the years to borrow for 10 years so when the u.s treasury is issuing 10 year 10 year debt securities it has had to pay these varying rates of interest okay so it's not some chart that i drew manually to make it look like a cycle okay so you can see how naturally things are moving in a cyclical fashion okay so this is an interest rate this is a very important interest rate so this is the market that you should always follow the most important uh, uh, interest rate market in the world in terms of long-term interest rates 10-year u.s treasuries okay so uh, that's this is where we are okay so we will continue with uh, we have some time so we'll continue with uh, the uh, decision problems okay so we have already gone through most of the decision problems now we were trying to look at we'll just try to cover these order types in greater detail um, okay so we have uh, these order types that we are going to look at now we're just going to cover these order types in greater detail so I've given you the link to the IB uh, definition of the market or the IB definitions are very good okay if you see any conflict uh, we have given a little uh, even more uh, tightly defined uh, definitions here okay but IB definitions are very good and if you actually look at IB somewhere here um, so in trading you'll find um, they put it under trading order types or just search for order types okay you will get a they have a big section on order types and we are only covering a few types of orders uh, but you can read about many other types of orders that exist on the IB website okay this is a very good website so this is where you go and search for short selling and you'll get a tutorial as well okay so market order now just treat to understand when we are going to talk about we're going to be talking about parameters number of parameters in an order okay and when we do that we are not going to talk about these when we say number of parameters we are leaving out these three things time and force amount and destination okay so if you can see here here the destination is NSE okay this destination is important because uh, this system is quite uh, sophisticated you have this smart routing system okay so you can also have smart destination so uh, uh, in the US for instance there are many destinations like NSE BSC there are many destinations so you can choose to send your order to a particular destination okay you can instruct the system that I want my order to be only on the NYSC or I want my order to be only on the NASDAQ okay I want it only on the internet uh, platform okay you can instruct the system so that's why this is also a parameter of an order okay parameter you understand what is parameter it is one of the elements that you have to specify in order to like if you say I want to buy a car then the brand is a parameter whether it's a diesel powered or petrol powered that's a parameter all these things you have to specify in order to flesh out the concept okay so we normally when we talk about the number of parameters in an order we are not going to talk about this what is this time and force okay so this is time and force time and force this time and force parameter is there for every order position size we are not going to talk about this also part of the parameter of the order okay so position size uh, time and force and destination these three things we are not going to talk about because these are there for every order 
Okay, so when we say number of parameters, uh, for when you come out with an answer, we say market order has no parameter. Actually, you can add uh, when we say zero here for market order, but actually these three parameters are always there, even for a market order. Okay, so although time and force is not really there because the market order is just, uh, uh, but for most other orders, uh, these three um, uh, parameters are there. We don't talk about them. So market order, understand basically what is the logic of a market order. We have this definition here, but we can. I've actually copied this definition here. Uh, we don't worry about this part. Okay. So I'll just put this. Uh, this is already there in your. Um, I'll just put this in your notes. So we are covering this. That we are. So we we already have a good idea about market orders. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Okay. So what we say is that in the market order there are no parameters. Okay, it has zero parameters. Okay. And what we are saying is there is a guarantee of execution, but there is no guarantee of price at which execution occurs. Okay, you can see this. This is already there in the IB website, and I have now put it into this also. We basically just try to understand what a market order is. A market order basically is an instruction to the system that I want to sell or buy. It can be a sell or a buy order. Okay, so I want you to sell or buy immediately. I don't care what the price is, just buy it. Okay, so you are familiar with this kind of a situation. So this you normally use when you have a fear that the market is going to run away from you, right? That if you don't buy, if you're trying to buy, if you don't buy it immediately, the market is going to shoot up and eventually you'll have to buy at a much higher price. So generally when you have a view, so every order type is connected to a view. You can understand clearly that in the case of a market order, the view is that you're afraid that the market market is going to run away from you in against you. Okay. So therefore you want to buy it or sell it immediately. Okay. So that's all it is. So market order is just an instruction to a system. Okay. That you have to sell it or buy it immediately. I don't care what the price is. And that's why there's no price guarantee. So that's why we say that there is a guarantee of execution, but there is no guarantee of, of price at which the execution occurs. Okay. So that's why we see when you sometimes place market orders, the system will give you a warning sign. Okay. That's why they want you to understand uh, because this is a big deal from a regulatory point of view. The regulators want to know that you are warning your customers about, you're making sure that your customers know what the risks of different types of orders are so that you're not sort of deceiving your customers. So that's why you'll see the brokers always giving you a warning. Okay. So this is all there is. Okay. So if you write, you can straight away, this leads us to the next prior type of order, which is the limit order. Okay. Which is, okay. Let's go this. A stop order also, but these DPs are actually a little bit. Uh, we don't want to use the DP numbers because the numbers have become mixed up. Okay, so all these DPs have to be removed. We'll worry about the DPs later. Okay, so we have limit orders, and then we have to remove all the DPs. This communication has become yeah okay so what we have the next one is so what is the system telling you that market order there is no guarantee of price if you want a guarantee what are they telling you to do what should you use limit order okay the system is already telling you that if you want a guarantee on your price you should use a limit order okay so you can see here limit order you already seen how limit orders are entered so essentially a limit order what we are doing why do we enter a limit order if now again in the case of Facebook let's say if I feel uh, that I want to sell it if I still feel bearish that I want to sell it but maybe I take a view on the this why it becomes important to look at multiple time frames okay so I'm not just going to look at this larger time frame here okay uh, I will look at also this is a very big picture time frame on the daily chart but I will also look at I'll take a view on looking at by looking at the 15 minute chart also so I see this peak over here 
and I feel maybe I look at a market here I want to go short but I feel by looking at the 15 minute charts I have a view that this thing is going to go to 200 before it drops okay so I, you have to take a view on the short term uh, pattern as well okay so then what I do is instead of selling at market because I'm fairly confident that it will go here so therefore what I do is I place a limit order to sell at 200 is this clear so this you can see the difference in the view so here I, I'm a seller okay I'm looking to sell but I'm not worried right now that the market is going to crash right away and I'll, I'll lose my price in fact I feel that the market is likely to come to around 200 and then drop so you can see that you have to form a view not just on the big picture but also on the small picture so every degree of trend that you look at you have to form a view okay and then again as you can see the view will always be based anchored in the stock because the view is essentially a statement about whether the trend the current trend that you can see whether it's over or not so therefore it will be anchored com completely in the stock okay so like now my this view for instance if i take this short term view okay that um, okay so if i take the short term view that uh, this is i want to sell but i think this is going to go to 200 before it drops okay so again you can see how the stops are important so the first warning that my view is wrong is that if it straight away drops below this level and then if it drops below this level then i'm clearly wrong in my short term view are you able to follow what i'm saying so if i have if i'm a seller and i'm thinking that i'm going to get a chance of getting going short at 200 but the moment the short term price action is such that it starts dropping below this and this and goes below this also so then I pretty much have to revise my view because it's not working the short-term view obviously there's some problem because I thought it would go to 200 straight away and then drop but that's not working out so you can see how so how uh, another advantage of technical analysis is that it allows you to take very specific views very precise views and it gives you an opportunity because you're just dealing with markets and objective data so you can see here later on when we discuss models in fundamental analysis I'll, I'll talk about this aspect of assumption like I talk about models as just a bunch of assumptions okay so there's nothing wrong with that but then what we really want to know is is my assumption still valid so if my assumptions are breaking down I want to know quickly so in very uh, brief uh, terms what I will tell you one of the reasons why I, I think technical analysis is, is a superior system is because in technical analysis you get very quick information when your assumptions break down are you able to follow what I'm saying here what is my assumption I'm taking a short term view my assumption in the short term system is that the market will go up to 200 and then fall it ideally won't even go below this certainly not below this but then the market drops below this and it drops below this and immediately I know that whatever I was assuming is wrong so whatever decisions whatever plan I had based on my assumption those are all gone for a toss now but in fundamental analysis so so the point is that every model is going to this is also a model essentially this is also based on a model of price action okay that this pattern of high lows is not over okay that is actually the superimposition of a model on the price action okay so uh, then what I'm saying is that uh, there's nothing wrong with a model being a bunch of assumption and every model is a bunch of assumptions what is really important and this is something you should appreciate because you will not hear it in any textbook you will not see it in any textbook but understand this that there's every model is going to be a bunch of assumptions there's nothing wrong with that okay but uh, it is very important because you're dealing with predictive models and you're dealing with uh, you know losses and profits if your assumptions go wrong okay what is very important is that the uh, you get quick information on the breakdown of your assumptions so that you can quickly take action to reverse your whatever you did are you following what I'm saying so one of the reasons I prefer technical analysis from a model perspective this is also a model I impose my model of price action on this and I say this is not over it's going to 200 and then coming down okay but my assumptions are obviously that it then therefore it can't go below this and certainly not below this okay before it has to hit 200 and before that it should hit 200 the moment the market actually goes below this and this immediately my assumptions have been broken and, and I have that information with me right so I know that my model has not worked and therefore I can take quick action so this is one of the reasons I think that technical analysis is superior because you get very quick information on the breakdown of your assumptions it's a very precise method it's very logical can you see that it's all logical what we are doing right you may disagree with my taking a negative bearish view on Facebook 
that you can always do but the point is from starting once you accept that bearish view everything else is logical can you see that once you decide not to question why I took a bearish view, why I didn't take a bullish view, okay, that's a separate matter that will never be resolved. It's always subjective. Okay, so uh, your time is up now. So I'll let you go. But I hope you understood this is a very important point that when you understand that even technical analysis, what we are doing by projecting all these movements, we are, we are just applying models. But the advantage is that when the because it's based on highs and lows, which are clearly observable, when the assumptions break down, you can see it immediately. And you can immediately take action to reverse your uh, decisions. Clear? Okay. Any technical questions? Then I won't close the mo uh, the recording. Anybody has any technical? You can go now. So our next class is on twenty seven. And fees. Yeah, don't worry, that will correct because I have the emails from Shogun. So you have the same thing. So I will correct it eventually because your decision about this is only going to affect your decision. No, no, I bought the mail. I bought the mail. I just haven't looked at it. I mean, I've looked at it also, but I haven't uh, incorporated it in the But we can always do it later. Okay. Okay, everybody, we can shut. Okay.